So, good morning. I'm Rul. I work at MWeb, mostly on Witty. Um, and so I'm going to talk about what Witty is exactly, how you can make a little simple Hello World style application with it, and how to create a larger application with stuff like templates and style sheets and internationalization features, and how you can maybe make it look a bit nicer without necessarily knowing a lot about CSS with Bootstrap, and where you can go from there and find more information about Witty. Um, so Witty is a server-side web framework written in C++. It is made for single-page applications, so you can make RESTful web services, but the API for it is currently a bit verbose. We're working on that. that. Um, and making websites is also possible, like our own website is made with Witty, but um, our strong point is really single-page web, web applications that you know, act a lot like desktop applications. Um, and it's very inspired by Qt, so it's widget-based. So it, it doesn't, uh, we work on a, a widget level, not on a page level or request level. Um, and it's a complete abstraction of many web technologies, and it adapts to whatever technologies are available. So you don't actually need JavaScript in your browser, but if you have JavaScript, we will, we will use it, and you don't have to write any JavaScript. Um, so, I get this question a lot, like, why would you use C++ for web development? Well, I mean, my immediate rebuttal would be to why would you use JavaScript for web development, because the people love to use that these days. But this is a quote of, by Matt Godbolt of Godbolt.org fame um, at CppCon. He said, I know we sometimes give C++ a bit of a bad rap for having funny defaults and weird odd edge cases, but just take a look at JavaScript, really. And I think, like, you can avoid a lot of the weird stuff in C++ quite easily, and JavaScript is m much more in your face. Um, there are people who might say, oh, yeah, but C++, what about these low-level vulnerabilities? But really, the biggest threats are still cross-site scripting and CSERF and SQL injection, and Witty defends against all of those. Like, we don't spend too much time uh, when using Witty thinking about those kinds of threats because it's handled by the framework. Um, and if you just use best practices and the right tools, like turn on all of your compiler warnings, use Valgrind, use address sanitizer, use static analysis tools, it's really not that big of a deal, and you can find a lot of problems that way. Um, it's also a very small footprint, which is especially interested for, interesting for embedded development. So there's no garbage, so no garbage collection. You don't need a runtime, you just need um, like, it's just a Unix-like kernel and environment, that's enough. Um, and creating small, statically linked binaries is possible, like, with the right compilation flags, you can turn the widget gallery, which is our largest example that uses a lot of the widgets in Witty. You can get it down to, like, six megabytes or something. Um, and it's quite familiar to Qt developers. Qt developers know C++, they know C++. C++ for desktop developments, and it's easy for them to port um, those applications to the web because there are benefits to having stuff on the web instead of uh, as a desktop application. Um, and in terms of ecosystem, like you can just use Witty for your web-related stuff and use any C or C++ library for everything else. You don't need like awkward uh, native wrappers or something like that. You can just use all of those native uh, libraries that are out there. Um, so Witty 4 was released in September of 2017, uh, and it updates Witty to C++11, and it's about time, and like nowadays, like most of these cross-compilation tool chains, they will usually have at least GCC 5. Uh, I know like OpenWRT, the current stable release is uh, still on GCC 4 dot something, um, but LEDE, Witty already built with that, and then the next release, Witty will also build with that. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to make this simple Hello World style application. So just something that shows Hello World is maybe a bit boring. So this one asks for your name. It says your name, please. And then uh, you can enter your name in this box, and then there's a button you can click, or you can press enter inside of the box, and you get a greeting. Um, 
So of course, every C++ application starts with a main function. Uh, and in our main function, we're going to create a um, W server instance using the special W run function. And so this W run function takes your uh, command line arguments and configures the server with them, like which port to listen to, stuff like that. And then it starts accepting connections. And when it gets a new connection, it calls this callback. Um, and this callback then gets the W environment, which is like uh, user agent information, stuff about the current session. Um, and then in this callback, you have to create a new instance of W application and return that. Um, so that means that there's one instance of W application per session. So we kind of create the illusion that every user is using their own application, even though it could be running all in the same process. Um, so if you ran that code, that would work, but you'd get an empty page. So that, let's start populating it. So um, this empty page already has a, a div elements inside of it. So that's the uh, roots. We call that a W container widget. It's just stuff, uh, widget that you can put stuff into. Um, and so we're going to add a W text. So you make a new W text, give it uh, some string, and then use add widget to add it, which is a bit verbose. So we shorten that to just add new, which does exactly the same. Um, then we'll create a line edit. Um, which is our input, and then add new also returns a raw pointer so that we can refer to this edit later. Um, and we add a button similarly, um, and add a break. I know this is a really verbose way of adding a break, but really, when you're using templates or when you're using layouts, like you don't end up doing this. Um, and then we just put a little placeholder in. Uh, that's a, like an empty W text. Um, we set the text format of it to plain because the default format is just filtered XHTML. And then we'll create a Lambda function, which, which will be our slots. And this slot, um, it calls uh, set text on results to set our greeting, and then the, the um, <clears throat> and then a W string is passed in, which is like our special kind of string, which is UTF-8 encoded, unlike STD string, which does not say anything about the encoding. And it has like localization features, which I'll get to later. And it has this um, argument substitution feature, so you can say dot .arg, um, and you get the text for, uh, from the edits and put it in there in the string. And then you can just uh, connect up the signal. So you connect the enter press signal of the edits to the show greeting function and connect the clicked function uh, to, of the button to the show greeting function too. So that's the final code. And so to run, uh, to build and run it, you do, you do it like any other uh, C++ uh, application, you just need to make sure that you've got your includes and your libs writes, and you link with uh, witty, libwitty, and libwitty HTTP when you build and release build, and with libwitty D and libwitty HTTP D if you're doing a debug build. Um, and so you run it then uh, by, well, there are two arguments that you always have to give it, and that's the doc roots, which is where your, all of your static contents uh, resides, and HTTP listen to indicate which host and port to listen on. So I'm going to show you um, this application. If we go to uh, localhost 8080, we enter a name and press uh, return or click the button. Uh, then you get this greeting. And now, to kind of demonstrate that this still works when you turn off JavaScript, uh, because, well, I'll actually first show the network tab. You see, when I do something here, um, second, 
you see that? Whoa. See that that was actually a little post uh, that just returns a tiny response, and then we turn off JavaScript. It still works, but now it did a full new request, which returned a full HTML page. Um, and when you turn um, WebSockets on, so you give it the extra arguments, uh, wiki-config, So we've got this widget config file which just turns on WebSockets. And then when I run it again, then you see this, uh, sorry. And you see this 101 uh, status. So now it's sending everything in a WebSocket frames. Uh, <laughs> and the browser, the window is a bit small for it, but yeah. Um, okay, so we made a simple application now, um, but. It doesn't look pretty yet, and if you're making larger applications, you might want to use a better way than just all, always like adding widgets and just doing everything from C++. Um, so the classic way to design your full application would be to use layouts, which is just like using uh, layouts in uh, GUI frameworks like Qt. Um, but we're going to use templates. Um, so for templates, you will have to use HTML and CSS. But if you're not really um, strong in CSS, you can also use Bootstrap. Um, so the typical project structure is a bit like this. Um, so you get your main directory where all of your stuff for your app resides. Like you could put your binaries there or whatever. Uh, and then there will be an app roots in there. And the app root contains stuff like configuration of your application, uh, your template files, or SQLite databases, or uh, internationalization files. So for example, we'll have a templates.xml, which is a template, uh, strings.xml, and strings underscore nl.xml, which are our English and Dutch translations, and then witty underscore config.xml, which is our uh, witty configuration. And then in the doc root, we'll put all of our static web contents uh, like images or style sheets, and we'll just have a simple style.css. Um, so this template.xml will contain something like this. So you have messages on the outside uh, tag, and then you define different messages, and we'll call this one tpl.template. This is just a convention that I'm using for convenience here, so you can call it anything you want, um, but I'm using the tpl prefix to make it clear that it's a template. Um, and then you see edit, btn, and result. Those are variables, and those we're going to put some stuff in later. And there's a special one uh, that's a function call, so it calls the tr function with uh, str.prompt arguments. And the strings.xml file is actually the same kind of file, so it also has messages on the outside, um, and then you define all of your different translations that way. Um, and our style.css, just a simple, lets it's the font to sans serif. And then when you want to load your style sheets, um, you have to use the message resource bundle of the app and call the use function. And then you give it the path to the app root, which is inside of this app root, um, where you can retrieve it with the app root function. And then you add templates or strings to load the strings. And you don't need to add the .xml. That will be added automatically. And you'll notice that there is no loading of strings underscore nl. It will also automatically load that when it detects that the locale is in Dutch. Um, and then you can also add a style sheet with use style sheet. 
So let's define our template now. So this is a way that you can extend uh, widgets to build larger widgets. Um, so we we'll just inherit from W templates. And first we'll initialize that with our string. So we'll use a tr function to retrieve tpl.templates. And then you can re register this tr function that we're using. Um, and then you create a new W line edit again, but then you bind it to this edit variable with bind widget. And we also have a shorter form of that bind new, so we bind a new push button to the BGN variable, and then uh, every subsequent argument is just passed into the constructor of a W push button. So we'll also use the TR function to get this greet me message. And now we'll leave the result empty for now. Then we're going to find this uh, show greeting function like this. So we could have captured the edits, but to show another feature, um, we can also use the resolve function, which will um, try to find this variable inside of your templates. And if it finds it, and if it can cast it to the type you give it, then it will return uh, a pointer to that. Otherwise, it will just return null pointer. And then you can, and then with bind string, you can bind uh, a string to a variable. Um, so we'll use this results uh, string and then set the text formats to plain again because the default is XHTML. And then we uh, connect our signals like before. And our new main function just becomes the using of the template and strings and style that CSS, and then we create our new hello templates. So building and running is the same, except that now you have to pass in the app root so it knows where to find that one. So when you run that, it looks like this. Uh -huh. Let's. Uh, Yeah, but I'm not going to show any more code in this uh, editor, so. Uh, anyway, so we have a new, uh, well, now it looks a bit nicer because you have a sensor font and it still works. And now when I change my language to Dutch, then it automatically changed the language. So I just changed it in my browser, and VT will automatically use the right message resource bundle. Um, so, oh. okay. So if you want to be a bit more lazy and you want to make something that looks nice quite quickly, you could use Bootstrap. So VT has support for teaming. So we support Bootstrap two and three currently, not four yet. Um, so you create a new bootstrap theme, you set the version to three, and then you set the theme, and that will automatically include all of the necessary CSS for bootstrap, and it will add the appropriate classes to the appropriate widgets, and widgets own custom widgets will also be in a bootstrap kind of style. So the template.xml, we can change it by adding another, <coughs> there's another feature of um, uh, variables, like you can uh, add a class to it, so we set the class of the button to BTM primary. So VT already adds a BTN, but then we also add BTM primary to make a bit more fancier button. And we'll also use the ID function to make the label a proper label. So it's like an ID for the edits, and the edit variable is defined in the same template. And then you just add some, some bootstrap sauce. Um, and the results, we want to put that in a nice box, so we'll just add a box around it, but we don't want to always show the box, so then we can use a condition. So the condition is kind of a cross between a variable and a tag. So <clears throat> when this condition is true, then this uh, block of uh, the template is used. So um, then we can uh, add this ID function again, and then the default 
value, value of a condition is false, so in our callback we'll set the condition with set condition to true. And then you run that the same, but you have to make sure that you also specify the resources there, which is the place where all the witty resources are located. Um, so this will make sure that it finds all of the bootstrap style sheets and stuff like that. So if I run that one, Uh, then it looks a bit nicer, and then you can enter your name, and it shows like a nice little box. And so where do you go from here? So we, we know how to make a simple Hello World application. We can make it look a bit nicer with templates and stuff. So there are some tutorials. So the Amazon introduction to Witty. Uh, you probably don't need anymore now, but there's also an introduction to VTDBO or ORM or authentication stuff in VT Auth. And there's just a general VT library overview that you can read. You can, of course, also find the reference manual on our website. And um, right. and our widget gallery is another good resource if you want to find out more about all of the widgets that are in Witty. So they always have, so we have stuff like 3D charts, for example. We have uh, 2D charts, all sorts of stuff. And there's always like a little code sample underneath the example so that it shows you how to use it. Um, and the last thing is you can, of course, go to the source code at GitHub and, uh, sorry, and in the source code repository, you can find examples and uh, especially uh, interesting are these feature examples which zoom in on, like, just a single feature and give you, like, the minimum uh, application that kind of demonstrates it. And that was it. Thank you.